That's the most advanced camera. <laughs> Anyway, so <coughs> one to one to testing, testing. Testing, testing. You know who this guy is? Hi. Uh, you have no idea who the fuck I am. <laughs> Doesn't. <laughs> anyway, so uh, living in Israel, I had some pretty funny stories. My aunt used to live on top of the CIA for 40 years. In Israel. Yeah, yeah. In the same building, which is a secret place. Yeah, which obviously everybody knows. Okay. So I'm crossing the street. I'm under that building. There's two uh, Chevy against RPG. Not against bullets. They're fucking windows, five centimeters. At Alon Salem? Yes, sir. Five centimeters. I mean, that's like three, four inch so windows against RPG. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's one who parks there, one here, and I'm in the middle waiting for a cab. Comes out the driver, I see the driver Israeli, so I tell him in Hebrew, what happened? The Israelis are working for the CIA. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, everybody came out of the car, and I, they hear CIA, and they have a Ramones t shirt. You did, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So we start talking with this and that, Ramones, I know, with CIA, was in my, my, you know, my uncle you know, here, it's obvious, you know, etc., 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 etc. And uh, my ex was having me followed by two uh, detectives. Okay, now, I was talking with the guy from the CIA, like I was fine with them, you know, talking about the Ramones and shit. And uh, I got the third hand that White Gills got connection with the CIA. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay. She pissed in her pants. That was really, really funny. Then, what the fuck are you doing? Then another one, you have the, the, the seals, or the, I don't know what, they have all kind of special units over there. Yeah. Which is this one guy, which is about 50, 60, full of muscles, with thin hands, and they usually go with three younger kids over there, probably Navy SEALs, special units, or whatever, stuff like that. So. They live very close to where I live, so we go and shop in the same supermarket every time. And uh, I always start with them and stuff. And, uh, oh, Ramones and this, yeah, we know Ramones, we know that, etc., etc. You know, and I said, uh, why you Navy SEALs? Uh, I can't talk about it. Are you? <laughs> I he says that, yeah? Yeah, but it's so obvious. They yeah. all have, you know, they all have these brown sneakers, these corduroy pants, these split brown shirts. There were three kids with one guy. But the best one was in the restaurant. I see this uh, guy, I mean, you could see he's American, bald. He's sitting at the bar, I'm sitting next to him. I've got my Ramones t-shirt and stuff. And uh, so he turns around and says, oh, you like the Ramones? I say, yeah. I say, where are you from? And uh, first of all, he says, what's your name? That's a typical question. They ask you first, what's your name? Yeah, okay. I said, if I was Jewish, if I wasn't Jewish, my name would be John Doe. <laughs> 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 and then you know, I said, what's your name? He said, my name is John. <laughs> right, that's yeah. what he said? Yeah. 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 So I started talking with him in Hebrew. I said, his Hebrew. Arabic, Arabic. In Chinese, Chinese. German, German. French, French. I mean, we did 10 languages. I broke on, uh, on Farsi, on Persian, and he broke on Japanese. Really? So he's, uh, he's, he's not an active CIA guy. He's, uh, you know, uh, Researcher, the, those guys that do, you know, read all the papers and do, I mean, information retrieval. Archae archaeologist? No, I mean, there's two kind of uh, CIA guys. The information guys and the active guys. Mm. The most important is the guys, the spies. The spies, they collect information. They don't know anything, uh, you know, that could put their life in danger. Because they're more important as a, with the knowledge of language, how to mix with people, etc., etc. So, he thought I was some kind of Israeli secret service because I was telling you what kind of f funky stories about what happened to my life, what I lived through about, about the KGB, the CIA, the Chinese secret service. I mean, I met them all. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story and stuff, but uh, everybody fucking knows, everybody in the army in America, if it's like 50 year old CIA guys, if it's Navy SEALs or whatever, Everybody knows the Ramones, a fan of the Ramones. They know the, uh, the Fantastic Five, Johnny, Joey, Dee, Tommy, and myself. Yeah, but 
which is I don't know. I didn't realize that in America it became it became. You don't want a Grammy, you know that. No, but I know, but it became it became uh, part of the American history. American you know? uh, culture. Yeah, American culture. Yeah. You know, which even though they, they were famous in their time. It's more uh, than ever. It's more than ever. Now yeah. everybody knows them. Yeah. Even in Israel, where nobody, twenty years, ten years ago, everybody Nothing. knew the dead Kennedys. Etc. Yeah. Etc. Et yeah. Nobody knew the Ramones. Now everybody knows the Ramones. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's 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 the new youth. Too. Yeah. It's the youth. And uh, I don't know why they can be back now. I don't know why the information. Also, if you look on the H1 now, you know they have these mini clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it's always 24 hours uh, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, you know. The first time, the first time they played the Ramones, there was every time I've got a thousand stories, where basically the Ramones kind of saved my life. I don't know how to explain. That I mean it was a good omen. Like when they tortured me in jail in Israel, I opened my head against the wall to go to a mental hospital, not to die. One more hour and I was dead. I walk in the fucking closed section of the mental hospital, like a uh, floor of a cuckoo's nest, everybody uh, like this, and I hear from far away some guys, a radio against his ear, and I hear the Ramones. First time ever I heard the Ramones fucking on, 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 on radio. Yeah. The second I walk into the mental hospital, you know, I've got millions of stories like this, I just need to... to well, there were a lot of songs that were uh, written about Mental problems. No, but there's yeah, there's uh, institutions. an institution and uh, a psychotherapy. Lobotomy. And not only that, the more I get older, the more I realize that basically every song of the remote is something I, I lived. You understand what I mean? It's it's not songs like it's an experience that that the Ramones wrote that happened to them and pretty much happens to everybody that you can relate to. It's not some fantasy. It's some not some bullshit. You know, and uh, I mean. The institution, I mean, uh, whatever, every fucking thing about drugs, about girlfriends, about about New York. Family. You know, family, you know, we're happy family, whatever. Everything at one point is something was that happened written. in your life. You was know? written. Yeah, you know, and it's something that happened to everybody. And uh, people don't realize, it's basically, it's actually not only, it's not only a, an icon of the, of the 20th century, it's uh, basically a... Uh, a psychological, uh, a psychological, how would I explain that? Psychological uh, phenomenon. phenomenon of the late 20th century that everybody went through. You know? It still is. Yeah, you don't realize that at the beginning, but the, the older you get, the more you realize it didn't only happen to you, it happened to everybody. You know? That's, that's what's really amazing about it, that every song there is something really. Somebody unique. can relate to. Yeah, you know? And uh, yeah, that's why a lot of people were affected by that thing. And now uh, they're dead. The what? Now they're all, they're not living. Well, you still alive? Well, yeah, but I mean Johnny and Joey and Didi on here. That's unfortunate, you know. Yeah, but you, it's yeah, it's a pity. But I don't know if it would have been like Van Gogh and you know like uh, Modigliani and stuff. Yeah. They became famous only after people realized not after after they died. But I know that uh, if we had three, four years rest after the 22 years we were together, yeah. I think we would have maybe <coughs> reformed and started selling out Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Like, like all the old band, like Deep Purple, yeah, yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, bullshit, yeah, yeah, and Black Sabbath, yeah. etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Et yeah, you're right about that. You know, but, uh, but I'm doing fine on my own and keeping it alive. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, cool. it's, it's good you're here. Yeah, you know, you think what you're doing, yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean, it's something. It's, it's a pity. I mean, you know, I remember when Jim Morrison died, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Kurt sucked. Coleman, and stuff. I mean, it's not the point. It's not so much the fact that they died. It's the fact that Mozart, what you missed, if they were still alive, you understand? What they could have done. What they could have done. Yeah. You know. Well, at least me and Joey did his solo album. That was good, you know. Well, it was his brother, no? No, his brother. Not sadling, uh, re re no, no, that was horrible. No, just me and Joey, the solo album that we did together. You did, you know. Joey had a wonderful world, what a wonderful yeah, world. Yeah, okay, that's the song that, from the That's from the song, solo yeah. album. Really? Yeah, we did it together. I tried to get that one, yeah. Yeah, we did it together. I'm so out of touch 
with all that stuff. So I don't have time to go on on, uh, on the internet and and see what's going on. Yeah, it's so. a lot of good stuff. No. You have to check what's uh, the new songs you did and stuff. Yeah, on our face. No, why not? I mean, it's over. I mean, you, I remember in Italy you, you made one uh, one uh, uh, forty-five, one single. Uh, with Michael. Yeah. Oh yeah, when we were angels. With the French guys, yeah. Uh, French guys. Who wrote? Who wrote it? Because the cartoon. Oh yeah, 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 that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. Good song, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And See? we just did another one in song. Oh, so, I yeah, so I don't know about this. It's in when it's called. But you're going to make an uh, LP? Well, you know, I'm going to do singles. Why make an LP? Because they're going to download it from the internet and it's... <laughs> no, I'll wait until yeah. I have 14, then I'll put it out. I'll put it out. Compilation. Cool. All right, so let me know for the cover. I'll get you the best... You know what I mean? The best guy for the cover. Uh, yeah, that guy is good, right? They're the fucking best man. So much for Barry Gill, she knew something. Huh? Oh, the best Barry Gill, she knew. Not that the camera is not. That's the camera was Barry Gill. Okay. Yeah, not that the camera. Who made my that? The master. Yeah, the dog. No, it's not the dog. No matter. Something for Lil, no matter. I just feel good so much. But anyway, so man, to thank you and Didi, that was unbelievable. I mean, I always want to meet you guys. Since 1976, when I saw you in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Rachel, my secretary, you know, told me she's making a dinner for my birthday, you know, in New York. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you and and uh, and Didi came. I mean, you, you didn't have any idea who the fuck I was, but you came, okay. and I think that's really amazing. Thanks. I Thank mean, you. nobody else would have done it, you know. Yeah, we uh, we were quite a duo. Yeah. And uh, he's the one I miss the most. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. He's the one I miss the most. Yeah. He was a really cool guy. He was the main yeah. songwriter, you know. Yeah, I think he wrote some of the best songs. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, he did. You know, what the uh, Quiet on the Eastern Front. Oh, yeah. Banner of Fair. Yeah, man, you know, all that stuff. You know? And nobody really knows they, they did that. You Commando. Know? East Berlin. He wrote Commando. First Law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, he wrote, yeah, he wrote some of the best stuff. Yeah. You know? uh -uh. Okay. I don't know. So what's the, what was the deal when he left to do this funk, 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 funk? Funky man? Yeah. He wanted to be a rapper. Yeah, come on. You know, there must have been something behind it, no? Well, he was, he was influenced by the rap scene. Yeah, but wasn't it be pushed down by Johnny? Or we can talk about that? No, I don't get to, we can talk about whatever we want. But he, uh... He's not a rapper, he's a rocker. He's a rocker, yeah, but I think there must have been a lot of, of, of putting down by Johnny. Well, Didi, he left. Yeah, but that's he the left reason. The that's why he left. Yeah, he, he told John, John to fuck himself. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's pretty really weird that for 40 years he had, he had a dictator, Johnny. Joey was sick all the time. Yeah. Uh, Didi was a drama queen, even he was a nice guy, but a complete drama queen. And you, you were quiet. I you was had, in the middle. You, you had your own problems. Oh, yeah. And how they stayed together for all this time? Because we knew what we had. But even even with Johnny being such, such sorry, but the fucking bastard like he used to be? Well, he couldn't play the guitar, so he had to do something. Oh, can you, do it? you know what I mean? There it is. This is all we can find out right now. <laughs> uh, don't forget to put the Queen of England. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Queen the Queen Mother. Queen Mother. Yeah, she's dead. Dead. yeah. Has she died? Yeah. No. No. Queen Mother? When? Oh, uh, about five years ago. Really? Yeah. We didn't know about that. Yeah, she was like <coughs> 98 or something. Oh, okay. And I didn't get any money from that? Where's my inheritance? <laughs> my stupid fucking cousin is married to the president of Iceland. Yeah. You know, I saw him last week in Israel, I said, enough with this fucking right. volcano. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I go to him, I said, you get enough publicity? Last time it took me 25 hours to fly from San Domingue back to Switzerland because of the fucking volcano. Now you lock it up, no more publicity for, our, for Iceland, and not only that, we don't want to see Bjork again ever. Oh, man. <laughs> I said, you put her in jail, you keep her in Iceland, we don't want oh, to see her ever again. He didn't laugh. 
you know. I mean, uh, why should anybody pay for the royal wedding? That wedding. Which one? The one? The prince and the... Yeah, you don't actually sell the, the, the princess. The stupid hat? Yeah, well, $100,000 on eBay? Really? Yeah. Fucking... You would have put a turd on it. I think they I mean, made more you know, money. I don't know why, why they, they didn't protest English. Yeah, whatever. Anyways. They like them. Yeah, they like what? It's just a question of... I don't like paying for their wedding. They made money other ways over it. Selling cups. Magazines. Everybody's making money out of it. Yeah. Trust me, if All they right. can make that much money, you can make more money. But yeah, that's, but not, except, that's, not, the, uh, that's not the fucking point anyway. Everybody thinks the point is to make money. I think uh, you're never going to be happy. You know, I, I have a good story. The, uh, one of the biggest nikes in the world, Safra, she's a good friend of mine and she buys jewelry for me. So yeah. she said she wants to buy a pair of emeralds for her sister. Now her sister is married to the richest guy in the world in Mexico. Oh, the oh. telecommunications? Yeah. So, there you go. So, yeah. I bring her like a pair of emeralds for $50,000 worth Seventy, eighty thousand, and I'm asking five thousand dollar commission for, for the work. Okay? Yeah. yeah, five thousand. Yeah. yeah. The guy argued for five hours. Did he really? Five hours. Oh, five thousand dollars. His wife started crying. She was so ashamed. Of course. Now you understand what the billionaire? No. That's the reason why. Of course. I worked with a guy in the jewelry business in New York. Yeah. Multi billionaire. He never fucking took a cab in his life in New York. Only by someone. <laughs> yeah, but one day they'll be old and they'll go, why didn't I do that? They, they, they won't even think about it, they just fucking die and that's it. Well, that's not a life. You know? No. But I, I don't care if I have money, in five minutes it's gone in my pocket, you know? I buy what I want to buy, I do what I want to do, then I'm broke. Then I make some more money. You know, cause the it, thing is, you know. So you, does this guy hassle you for jewelry yeah, too? Does he try to knock the price down too? Who? The guy, the rich guy who won't take a taxi. In the no, head. that's the guy who taught me the jewelry business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, does he have his own line of jewelry? Uh, no, it's uh, second hand and big nice. stone, big diamonds. We know the guy making jewelry, but serious, serious stone and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beads. Uh, nice. Oh, yes, yeah, got you. Yeah, but no. different apples. Yeah. yeah, coffee. Okay, cool. Coffee. No, thank I've got a good story See, about that different apples. Oh, no. It's a supply. Uh, Cartier, it's Tiffany's, Aroniston, all the biggest dealers, I mean, all the biggest houses in New York. Okay. And uh, I go to Van Tiffen Apples to send them pearls, the best pearls in the world. They bring the expert. She takes the pearls and put them against her teeth. She sees them not less. Pretty funny.